everyone. How are you? Here I am with viral wisdom number 50. So excited to be here with you. So as you sign in, tell me where you're from. Tell me how you are. Tell me what you're feeling. I'd love to get a pulse on, on your inner life. So check in, tell me where you're from and how you're feeling. I would love to know. It's Viral Wisdom Day number 50. So as I said yesterday, if you heard number 49, I did announce that when I reach number 52, I will be no longer doing it every day, but I will be doing it once a week on Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern. So I will be continuing, but it will look a little different. So hi, everyone. Yes, day number 50, and this is um, the viral wisdom. I started uh, talking even before that, I think for a good 16 days before. But I will be meditating with people every single day on another page. So I hope you join me there. That page is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash get superpowered. I'm just going to type it into the Facebook feed. Sorry, Instagram. I'm being partial. Um, get super powered forward slash. There you go. I, I pasted it there. Come and meditate. Hi, Lou, Louis. You're new. Hi, Charlotte from Quebec. Kate found me on day 42. Well, you can go back and watch everything that I've talked about before. It's all there on my YouTube channel. And make sure that uh, you're part of the, um, the newsletter. So people who are taking, taking some of my courses, which are 50% off only till Sunday, the signature course is The Awakened Heart. It comes with an add-on meditation, but you need to add it on. And it's another 52 hours of meditation, but you need to buy that. And uh, take advantage of this half-off coupon. Use the coupon half-off, 50% off all my courses. And you get hours and hours and hours worth of therapy, really, or some coaching and uh, some enlightenment and some, some deep way of thinking about your life in a new way. So I will be continuing with the viral wisdom every Sunday after this Sunday, once a week. It will go to once a week. Hi, Bitha Surya from Indonesia. So go to my courses on my website and enter the coupon half off and you'll get to know what the price is. There are different prices, different uh, ranges for different courses. And they are they are yours for a lifetime. Remember that they are with you for a lifetime. Okay, so today I have a lot to talk about. So let's get to it. So you know that I've been talking about how uh, racism, for example, is an attachment to a delusional belief system. And somebody wrote something beautiful on my Facebook page. So I'm going to read that to you and have a discussion about that to understand more how we in our own psyches adopt, we in our own psyches adopt a superior position only because we are losing control. We adopt a, a veneer, an ego of power and control, not unlike our president of the United States, only because really inside we are cowards. But bullies are really cowards inside because they're terrified of losing control. So whenever you see someone trying to control you, Instead of feeling that they are, they are winning and that they are controlling you, you need to understand this person is really, really mentally deficit. This person is really weak inside. This person is really lacking inside. This is what you need to understand when somebody is trying to overpower you with power or trying to raise their voice, trying to bully you, trying to berate you trying to degrade you. The only reason people do that on the outside is because they are very weak on the inside. If you can't understand that, you will get bullied by the outside person. If you allow yourself to believe 
that the other person on the outside is meant to control you, is meant to overpower you because of your own inner wounds, you will allow them to win. You will allow them to, to dominate, to degrade you. This is why I talk about inner healing. If we are not healed from the inside, then our holes, H-O-L-E-S's, will be filled by other people's contamination. When we are whole and complete on the inside, people from the outside cannot penetrate us. So this is why inner healing is so essential. If we are not healed on the inside, we will be intimidated by the outer bully. It's only when we understand that the bully on the outside is a bully because they are actually so mentally in putrescence on the inside, so contaminated on the inside. And when we can see them for that, we can get power instead of giving away our power. So I'm gonna read you what this person wrote. I thought it was beautiful. Um, and he, his name is Fratske. And I'm just gonna read out your words, Fratske. So I'm so sorry, but I told you on Facebook that I'm gonna do it. So he wrote it so beautifully. He wrote, I've been thinking about this for a while now while going through my own process of mental and emotional healing. Now, actually, I don't even know if it's a man or a woman. I'm sorry, Fratske. I don't know what gender you are. It doesn't matter. So this person wrote, writes, people who have reached a true healing point in their mental, emotional health journey learn that one is able to practice the ability to not take things personally. They learn the ability to not be offended by something rooted in the other person's insecurities. They learn that the insecurities lie in the other person, not in them. Hateful actions are a reaction to a triggered insecurity within oneself. So anytime, you know, I'm digressing, anytime you are around people who are depleting you, people who you feel controlled by, people who you feel are putting you down and you're feeling lesser than with, it's not you. You are allowing it because you have your own inner wounds, but it's their insecurities that are making them do that. It's really important to understand this in order for you to heal. If you don't understand this, you will keep giving your power away to other people. And there are plenty of people out there who will ravenously, parasitically devour you, take away your power. You know, people are, are energy zappers. They are energy vampires out there. They are power hungry people because they in their own life did not have power when they were growing up. So they, they became faulty and messed up in their mind. And now the only way they can get power is to snatch your power. But I care about you, about how you can be strong. I don't care about stopping them. The way to stop them is to become strong from here and to gather the troops to become solidified. Solidarity is the antidote. You cannot change President Trump. He is irrecoverable. You, the only way to change is to rise up on the side of the antidote. How can we rise up enough so that we rise strong to be the light in face of the dark, right? So to speak. One feels threatened, thre threatened and acts out in defense of themselves. It is the inner child calling for help. If one is able to make peace with themselves and their past, then there is no need to act out in anger and hurt. I'm, I'm shifting his words and putting my own words into trauma, especially that which occurs at a young developmental age, takes deep root in people and causes them to act in inhumane ways. Addressing this is the important thing. So what this says and what I want to elaborate on today is that everything is coming from deep inner wounding. When we are wounded from the inside, when we are contaminated from the inside, then the only thing that can come outside is vomit, <laughs> is control, is degradation, shame. So when you hear somebody shaming you from the outside, instead of taking it in, you need to understand, wow, they are so mentally ill. They're so filled with their own inner inferiority with their own inner insecurity 
that they are so messed up. I cannot take it in. I cannot take it into me. And this is why we need to heal from the inside because as long as we have holes, as long as we are porous on the inside, then their crap will come straight into us and we will enmesh with their crap. This is why we need to be airtight on the inside so that we can deflect the outer external toxicity, right? It all comes from the outside if we allow it. So how do we not allow it? Is by, by healing from the inside, by becoming airtight on the inside. Our holes on the inside need to heal. And the way to do that is through this inner work. This, this is what all my courses, especially the ones I've been talking about, The Awakened Heart, is about becoming strong and powerful on the inside. When we become strong and powerful on the inside, we learn to accept ourselves as we are. Self-acceptance, really, it sounds so cliched. It sounds so trivial, self-accept, accept yourself, okay. But let me tell you, it is the radical step toward healing. What are we expect, accepting of ourselves? What are we self-accepting? Let me tell you, we're accepting who it is we are. What does that mean? We're understanding ourselves as a deep, intricate set of patterns that have brought us to the present moment. So when I help people do inner work, what I'm really helping them to do is see themselves as an intricate pattern of cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect from childhood, right? So the racist did not just become a racist. <laughs> the racist has been wearing the cloak of racism for generations. So much so it was in the, in the cereal that they ate as children, in the milk that they suckled from their mother's breast. Racism is institutionalized. It is generational. It is ancestral. That is why it is so hard to catch, so hard for the racist person to even see that they're racist. They're like, I'm not racist. This is the pillar in my mind. I don't even know how to remove it. It's in the mind, right? So is all isms, sexism, ageism, all the delusions we live with are in our blood from childhood, in the milk we drank, in the, in the songs our mother sang to us. They come from generations. And that's why it is so scary when you begin to wake up to realize that this has been going on in my family for generations. This is why doing the inner work is so important because you're breaking patterns and you have to ask yourself, am I a pattern disruptor? Am I, does the buck stop here? I know in my family, in terms of female lineage and gender lineage of what it means to be a woman, 100% I have broken the pattern. I may have messed it up and made a new effed up pattern, no problem. But did I break the old pattern? 100%. I have broken the pattern for my daughter after generations of women have put legacies on the next generation, on our daughters, and have burdened us. I was burdened by generations and legacies of ancestral baggage. And for sure, I stopped that pattern. Did I create a new one? Maybe worse than before maybe but did i stop the old one 100 percent. and each one of us when we wake up to our power to our power and we heal ourselves we become pattern disruptors we change the pattern we say you know let there be a new effed up pattern in town but this old one this zombified unconscious one that we are just mindlessly reacting to that's got to stop that's got to stop with me the buck stops here and there will be pain in my life because any pattern change requires tremendous courage, requires such audacity. Do you know how audacious you have to be to change a pattern? Oh my goodness. You have to be bold. You have to be brave. You have to be daring and you have to kind of not give a damn. And these people, you, you have it in you, can break a pattern. You can be the pattern disruptor in your own life, but how? 
by going within and healing your past, seeing yourself as cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. And as you see that, then you accept yourself. You go, you know what? Yeah, I was a racist person for 29.2 years of my life. And now I'm 29.3. Let me break the pattern. You know, I was uh, unhealthy in my eating patterns and I was an addict for for 60.1 years of my life. You know what? Now it's 60.2.25. I'm going to do it. I'm going to break the pattern now. All our patterns have been in some way or the other inherited from ancestral lineage, from ancestral legacies. They didn't just come to be. You didn't just come to be the fool that you are and the fool that I am. Nope. We will take responsibility by seeing that there is a huge line of cause and effect. And this unconsciousness has been coming down the pike forever. And I will take responsibility for how it is in the now. But boy, it's been there for forever, for eons, from mother to father, grandmother to granddaughter. It's been going on forever. And now I will take my power and say, I will change the patterns today the racist pattern, the ageist pattern, the sexist pattern, the whatever the ism is, we have the power to change it now, but only when we look in the mirror and see it for what it is worth, that it's been there forever. And now I have to reverse the tide. I have to change the flow. Do you know you can do that? You are a pattern disruptor, but it takes inner work. It takes going back. It takes admitting our blind spots. It takes looking at our shadow, understanding, okay, why did I act like this? Why am I feeling this? Why am I in this amount of pain? Why am I trying to control this situation? Understanding how your wounds from childhood have created a false persona called the ego. And the ego is very primitive. But the ego is like, I don't know what to do. There's no adult in town. Can some adult please come and fire me? Because I'm just destroying my life. I'm destroying you. And my work helps you activate your adult self so you can tame your ego and heal yourself. This is what it means to do inner work, is to understand the many faces of your ego, of which racism is one face, and how to heal that and the way the racist person for example needs to heal that but it's their responsibility we can't do it for them is that they need to go within and go wow my inner child is really wounded it's destroyed i have created this persona of you know with my rifles and with my tattoos and with my klu klux klan mentality to hide that actually on the inside i am so powerless I am so afraid of black strength. This is why I act like this, because I'm actually so scared that they are superior in a way. I'm scared of their dominance. Why else are we acting like this for eons against black people? Obviously, we're threatened. Otherwise, we wouldn't act like this. When we're not threatened, we're not threatened. We don't act like crazy people. We act like crazy people when we're threatened. But then the question to ask is, what are we threatened of? And we're always threatened in all situations with our children, with our partners, of the other person's rise and dominance. We're scared. If they rise, then what? They, the black man, you know, who has a bigger everything. Oh, the white man feels, oh, his bigger everything makes me feel very inferior. I'm sorry. So what will I do if he comes and takes all my women? It's primitive. It's subliminal. It's deep, 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 deep down. But no one can own it because it's too, too threatening, too threatening to say I'm scared. So instead of saying I'm scared, I act all powerful and I get all my macho machismo out there. But it's so apparent. It's so apparent that you're scared. You're terrified. Why can't we just say we're terrified? Why can't white racist people just say, you know, I'm sorry, I'm acting racist. I'm really scared. I'm actually a little boy inside. No, no one will ever do that because that's not our culture. Our culture is not to be honest. Our culture is to be dishonest and to act, but forget that. Let's talk about how we can heal, yes? So how can you heal in your personal life is to look at your power tripping, to look at how your ego covers up for your truth. 
It's so hard to be an authentic truth. It's so hard to be in our power and say, you know what? I'm scared right now. You know what? I don't know right now. You know what? I'm really feeling vulnerable and helpless. We don't talk like that. So we cover it up. We wear a mask of ego and dominance to create superiority because ego, ego wants to be in control. But let me tell you, the more people want to be in control, the less they are in control, right? As the Tao so beautifully talks about all the time, the Tao Te Ching only talks about how to give up control, how the true leader understands that there is no one to lead. Right In verse three, the master leads. He helps people lose everything and he leads by helping people lose everything. He helps them by helping them empty their mind and filling their cores. Right, I'm reading verses from the Tao where they talk about how the true master understands that the true power is never in control. The true power is always releasing control. This is the only way the masters know how to live, right? And I'm, I'm gonna look for some verses. Oh, here, verse number 17 from the Tao. When the master governs, the master meaning the master of the mind, yes, the wise master. When the master governs, the people are hardly aware he exists. Next best is a leader who is loved. Next is one who is feared. The worst is one who is despised. If you don't trust the people, the master realizes, then you make them untrustworthy. The master doesn't talk, he acts. When his work is done, the people say, amazing, we did it all by ourselves. The master makes you feel that you've done it because the master doesn't need the accolade. The master doesn't need the praise. The master just wants the people to feel powerful. So anytime anyone on the outside is taking power, including me, if you see me taking power, fire me, right? Because the minute I'm taking power, it means that I need it. And if I need it, it means I didn't have it. And you don't want to be around someone who doesn't have their own inner power. When you have inner power, you never want it from the other person. It's just, they go in tandem. So anybody out there in your life, in your personal life or in government or in your in the policemen and the police women you work with if you see them entering control degradation shaming uh tyranny you have to understand that it is a direct reflection of their lack of power and instead of falling into it instead of giving into it and saying oh okay overpower me i'm powerless you have to do the opposite and understand that they are powerless and that you have power. It is so reflective of your inner state of groundedness, right? How much power do you realize you really have inside? And where does your power come from? Does it come from your shoes? Does it come from your face? Does it come from your body? Does it come from your husband? Does it come from your wife? Or does it come from you? And this is what I try to teach, especially parents. Don't get your power from your children. Your children are not there to make you feel powerful. Your children are not there to make you feel good about yourself. Your children are there to allow themselves to enter into their own power. So all these racist people out there, anyone in your life who has put you down and you've believed it, you have to now realize, oh, I didn't realize that they have no power. They're actually little children screaming for help and attention. They're little toddlers having a tantrum with guns. Yes, old, old men who are actually toddlers are very dangerous. Old white men who think they have power with their rifle, but they're actually toddlers, which they really are, are dangerous men indeed. And we need to understand when you give a toddler a gun and you tell him to shoot, he is somebody you have to be scared of. So yes, our black mothers need to be scared for their black sons. This is a dangerous world with toddlers holding gu machine guns. That's what it is. We live in a world with toddlers holding machine guns. Any tyrant in your life is a toddler with a machine gun. Many husbands, I just had a session 
with a woman with a narcissistic husband who was scared to leave him because he was going to threaten her to take her to court and call her crazy. And yes, this is unfortunately a world mostly predominated with a culture of narcissism. I'm not saying people are narcissistic. The culture is narcissistic. And many of the men who have been raised to condition, to be conditioned, to be like that mindset are ruling our world today. And we who are not narcissistic, not of that mindset, the empaths of this world, the feeling people of this world, the people who have an awakened heart, both men and women are suffering at the hands of this whiteified, narcissistic, patriarchal world we live in. So I care about you now, you on an individual level. If you see it out there in the institutions, and it's out there, it's out there in the religious institutions, it's out there in the Vatican, I'm sorry to say, sorry to say, it's out there in the Vatican where there is power tripping and tyranny going on. You can't, you can't shut your eyes. You're not being lesser uh, a Christian or a Catholic if you also open your eyes. It's okay. You're still a staunch Catholic and a staunch Muslim and a staunch Hindu. It's okay. But you can have eyes open. You can see the, the dysfunction for the dysfunction. No harm. So this, this kind of narcissism and patriarchy exists everywhere. The religious institution, the educational institution, the police, insti police institution, the institution of law and governance. It exists there. It exists in our courthouses. It exists in our marriages. And until we understand that it's the mother, the mothership is whiteified, narcissistic patriarchy, which is capitalistic. Okay, whiteified, narcissistic, capitalistic patriarchy. Every day I add a new word. The first time it was only patriarchy. Then I said whiteified patriarchy. Then I said whiteified, capitalistic patriarchy. Today I'm adding a new word, narcissistic. It's all connected. It's just a new, a new adjective to give it nuance, to give it extra color and texture. It's all the same. If you understood what a whiteified patriarchy is, you would understand it's capitalistic, separatist, narcissistic, dominating, tyrannical, right? I just highlight a different word. It's all in there. When the mother is that, the children are that. You and I suffer from that in our own way. Either we are the empaths suffering against it or we are that in our own world. It, we can't escape it. I'm speaking the truth. As a parent, I can't escape it. I want to be patriarchal. I want to be hierarchical. I want to have tyrannical control over my children. When I'm out there and the old me, the unconscious me and the unconscious you goes out there and we want to compete because we see the other as us versus them. We see the other as an enemy. You and I are children of a patriarchal hierarchical culture we have it in us why do we want to compete why because we've been conditioned to compete but it's toxic the true way to survive the true way is not to compete it is to cooperate to come together as one but you and i we have it in our blood we want our children to win my child should win why your child is lesser than your child doesn't deserve to win why is my child so special my child is not special, only unique, never special. But when we have this mentality of me versus you, it's narcissistic, it's capitalistic, it's separatist. So I'm trying to show you when the mother is that, the children will be that. So how do we heal? We heal the child in us. When we heal the child in us and we let go of our own narcissism, our own capitalism, our own separatism, our own racism, we all have it to a degree inside us. It's it not, it cannot be helped. You're not a bad person for having it. You're just conditioned. If you grew up in a culture, which is of a certain way, you are going to be influenced. You know, I used to watch Hindi movies growing up. Please, once in your life, watch a Hindi movie. I haven't watched one for now 25 years, but when I was young, I grew up on Hindi movies. Movies have acculturated me. Ask most Indian women, they were raised by Hindi movies. They learned how to be a good woman from the Hindi movies. Ask all Indian women who grew up in India, they want to be the Hindi heroine from the Hindi movies. Totally deluded, totally messed up, right? We learned how to be good women from movies. What I'm trying to show you is that culture is insidious. You are not a bad person for having been acculturated 
with these ideals. You're not a bad person for thinking you are wrong and lesser than. You have been acculturated to think that way by the bullying culture. So until we wake up and until we open our eyes and stop feeling afraid to look at the isms of our life, to look at the belief systems we have all indoctrinated, we will stay trapped. We will stay victims to the patriarchy. We will stay victims to the bullies in our lives. We will stay victims to each other. Women will stay victims to other women. Only when we heal and become solid on the inside, then we will see beauty on the outside. And when we see beauty on the outside, we will want to preserve it. And when we want to preserve it, we will want to rise together. When I see women, I see my mother, I see my sister. I do not see a competition, even if she's 1 million percent better looking than me or skinnier than me or curvier than me, whatever. I adore her. I see her as beautiful. I want to be her at best. I don't want to compete with her. And when we get to that state, we will know we have healed because we want to help everyone. The fact that we live in a divided world today is because we are divided inside. We're sick inside. We're sick. We're sick. We're sick. We do not accept ourselves. And because we don't accept ourselves, we keep seeing threats on the outside. Everyone on the outside is a threat. I want my child to do better than your child. No, I want your child to do as well as my child. That attitude comes from a healed heart, from an awakened heart. Take my course, The Awakened Heart, really. That's my course, The Awakened Heart, was my healing that I shared with the world. Because I realized if my heart is defiled, if my heart is broken, if I don't like myself, how am I going to love on the outside? How am I going to be there on the outside? I need to heal myself. So this is what we all need to do. And when you and I heal, we will begin to radiate. And when you and I begin to radiate, now it's a domino effect. So one is a million and you are the one. Come and join me to meditate. I'm going there right now. I'm already late to my other page, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash get superpower. Come meditate with me right now. Oh, how do I put this off? Thank you for joining me, everyone. See you in meditation.